Hello everybody and welcome to another third, fourth or fifth party video, depending on what you want to call these products. In today's video, we're taking a look at the B2P partner Evolution Metamorphosis of Mecha Vehicle. This is the number one. Uh, this is kind of first product from Wei Zhang's new branding under the WJ Toys banner. And this is kind of a, almost a commemorative version of their MPP-10. It's done up in his Battle Deco, but with a much better paint scheme, minus those kind of bird blue splotches that fans were never keen on. And he comes with a big solid base. Now just bear in mind that where you see this B2B partner official logo, that means it's going to be a limited run. And once they've sold out, they will not be producing anymore. With the front cover off, we get a lovely embossed foiled image of Prime stating battle damaged. A set of instructions and Prime himself housed snugly in his polystyrene prison. We also get this separate box here which I'm now about to open. This contains his really hefty display stand. And there we have him all inside his battle damaged base. Adore how that looks. Really nice big solid base designed and sculpted just for his feet. They slide in between the heels and the toes. He's got really nice piercing blue eyes on this version as well. Now we get his Energon Axe done up in this kind of orange with the silver tints on either side. We get an additional set of fists. If you're not happy with the kind of bog standard MP10 fists, we get these fully articulated hands. Still not as many scuffs on these as on these ones, but you might like your full range of articulation. Again, pretty straightforward to chop and change out. One, two, three screws, undo over the mushroom peg and redo those up. We get his standard. MP10 style gun which still folds up. This is just a much heavier duty version. We get his matrix of leadership done up in this nice big chunk of die cast and we actually get another spike figure with this as well. It does look a little bit boss-eyed and uh, no real battle damage on him but uh, it's nice to have another little spike to add to our collection. Wish they'd have done him maybe to celebrate this being kind of their final version of this. Maybe giving him a little hat or maybe kind of bootlegged and oversized those Dr. Wu figures. That would have been awesome. Now, the main difference between this and the previous battle damaged incarnation is the fact that they've kind of listened to fans. Fans didn't like the white splats, etc., that were over the corners and around the hips. Everything's nice and tight. It's got those piercing blue eyes, it's still got that kind of, it's a nice soft kind of very realistic paint. We still have a, a space here for an insignia, but no insignia to go on there. We can still push the smokestacks up and down. I just love the base as well though. It's a really solid lump. Yes, he's got a bit of motion going forwards and backwards here, but he's not going anywhere. The base itself is an extremely solid piece. And I mean, that is going absolutely nowhere. That's fantastic especially for photographers, etc. You can kind of have this mounted on top of other rocks or around grass areas and kind of really raise him up. Uh, have him jump down maybe. It's a good crater and really does look the part. Now, if this is your first time looking at MPP-10, as you can see, he is an oversized version of the MP-10 with a few little added extras like the extra vents on those grill pieces on the legs. It's a good solid piece. Uh, Wei Zhang, uh, when they were Wei Zhang, were renowned for giving us high quality products at an affordable price. Now being known as WJ, uh, they still keep the same factories, etc. They're just rebranding slightly. Uh, I've been speaking with them directly and it looks like they may be straying away from the knockoffs as such and going more down the third party route, kind of producing third party figures which in itself is a good and a bad thing. I know there's a lot of fans out there that would love for them to continue their kind of KO oversized things, but the world is a changing place. I think Hasbro are getting a lot more strict on copyright infringement, even 
in China. So whether they'll have a little off branch under another name, who knows? I mean, they do sprout up, don't they? <laughs> These little off branches do sprout up out of nowhere, uh, sharing the same sort of factory, but uh, keeping it all a little bit hush-hush. Let's take a look at the back of the figure again. We've got this scuffage going on along here and around. It's subtle. It's a lot more subtle than it was with the first release of this figure. Uh, they kind of went a bit, little bit overboard with uh, scrapes and scuffs and tears. Uh, I think this looks a lot more natural. It looks more like just general wear and tear as opposed to he's been in a full-blown war. Uh, I think it's a lot, a lot more suitable. And uh, I can see why they've done what they've done. It, in my opinion, it does look the part. And here we have them alongside some of the other oversized Autobots. Now I spoke to Wei Zhang about the oversized MPs and apparently the sales were terrible. They just didn't have the market for them. So it's looking like they're not going to continue, which is a shame. Uh, it is a real shame. Maybe Kuba cool Bao pick up the slack uh, like they did with that old bumblebee there. Or maybe they'll go over to the company that uh, did the Inferno because it was produced in Model Wizard Wei Zhang's kind of factory, I think, but it was a different company that actually produced it. Uh, maybe we'll actually get a grapple. I just wanted some of the cars in scale. I mean, I've got the oversized sideswipe downstairs, but he's just massive. He's bigger than Ironhide's. <laughs> that doesn't really work. Uh, these do look absolutely sublime together. Uh, it's just a shame there isn't more of them. Now, for those of you curious on the articulation, the head can rotate left and right. We can go up and down. The antennae can, of course, move. The arms can go around on a friction joint. We can come out to the side. Again, we've got friction there. Upper bicep rotation. We've got a bend on that elbow, rotation on the wrist. We have a waist rotation. We have ratchets out to the front of the leg, ratchets out to the back. Kind of a softish ratchet out to the side there, upper thigh rotation. We do get a bend on that knee, get a rotation on the knee, and we can get up and down on the feet, up and down on the toes and the heel spurs, and of course we do get a really nice ankle pivot. I mean, he's no Jean-Claude Van Damme, but that's a pretty wide, solid stance. Let's kind of get over the uh, detailing on this. It very much reminds me of something we get from Marvel Select, but it is a complete and utter lump. Now this is a test shot, it's a pre-production sample. Uh, I will be getting hold of, I think it's four or five, of these to sell at TF Nation. They're coming from Primetime Toys. Uh, Greg's ordered some and he intends to sell some there on my stool. Now each one of those will have a number, a license number on the base to tell you exactly which number you've got from the production. Obviously this being a test shot doesn't have it, uh, but yours will. So if you're interested in one of these, just pop by and see me and uh, the money will go straight to prime time toys. Now for those interested in how he looks kind of just sporting his G1 style weapons, he's got the smaller rifle there and he's got his Energon Axe. He just looks hench, doesn't he? I'm not sure how many of you are actually going to display yours in your vehicle modes, but let's get him transformed up anyway. Uh, these feet go straight, close in on one another. These leg panels come around on double hinge and that's going to push and lock and tab. Again, on this side, push and lock and tab. Get rid of any polystyrene that you have floating around and push that in. We have these tabs on the underside. This lifts up, this flips around and covers off the back end. So again, bring this up, flip this around and that covers off. You want to make sure that these legs are straight at the knee and at the thigh. They're gonna to push together and then pressing in to these tabs, we're gonna push Lovely, love how smooth that was. And that's gonna go all the way in, like so. That went in really nice and smoothly. The upper torso is going to rotate around, like so. And these panels here are gonna push and plug in at the waist, like so, really, really firmly. Uh, the feet can then slide and he's going to push 
and lock in. Arms, depending on which hands you have, uh, just make sure that the fingers and thumbs are all tucked in. Arm um, both sets, this will then rotate, come up and lock in. Do that with both hands and then we can open up this lovely big chest panel. This piece here, it's going to pull away like so, come down and that's gonna push. and lock nicely into position on the underside there. These panels come down and rotate all the way around. Bring these tabs out, square that off and just bring these down to the side for now. So again on this side, bring this down, bring this out, bring this out like so and then rotate that all the way around, keeping those out of the way. This panel here, including the entire matrix chamber, which again is done up in this kind of off-white, dirty color. Bring this matrix section down, this will come down, and this is gonna push onto the front like so. The head can tuck inwards, nice and square. And then these arms, we're gonna bend them. We're gonna push and compress and we're gonna bring out these ladder pieces. And as we bring the arm around, we're gonna straighten out this tab here. And these are going to push, compress, and slide into that void. And if you look on the back of each of these, there's a tab which will push and tab in, locking into that torso. And you should be able to see where this needs to lock in at the back there. So that all pushes in, these are down, like so, these are in, everything's tabbing in nicely, these then just lock off, this comes up, this will tab in, this will tab in here, this will come over, and this will come over, like so. We can then bring the wing mirrors out to the side and we can extend these smokestacks if you haven't already straighten this off tabs this in and there we have one gorgeous looking mpp10 clambering over the kind of rocky terrain uh, absolutely adore what they've done with this the uh, tires are still rubber but they are absolutely filthy and weathered again we've got that section there for the autobot insignia everything tabs together really nicely it's a very tight piece Got space there for the MPP-10 trailer as well if you decided to purchase one. Uh, even the panel looks somewhat faded. It's definitely a much better version than what we got previous. Uh, it does roll really quite nicely. And of course there is kind of space if we pop this up and uh, we could put Spike in the cab, but you won't be able to see him because we've got smoked glass on the front there. So it's entirely up to you what you do <laughs> with your characters. Entirely up to yourselves what you do with your characters, but personally I think this is the definitive version of MPP-10. Really nice piece, where whether it's a send-off for Wei Zhang or whether it's the start of something new, uh, I don't know. I really don't know, but uh, I think it's worth, definitely worth getting a hold of because I can't imagine it devaluing anytime soon, especially with the way things are going with the imports, etc., to the US from China. Uh, I think it's definitely worth grabbing hold of one. If you do want to get one, remember I do only have four or five of these at TF Nation. I believe Greg will be coming. Uh, so you may be able to replenish my stock depending on how well they sell. But uh, until then, from myself and the rest of the Collectibles household, and of course the WJ Toys number one immortal passion evolution metamorphosis of Mecha Vehicle, ah. Goodbye.